Today we're going to continue on with our clipper configuration. We're going to take a look at pressure advance. Hello everyone, Chris here, and yes, Pressure Advance is pretty much available in every firmware, in Clipper and in RepRap, and then they call it Linear Advance in Marlin. But it's pretty much achieving the same thing, no matter what firmware flavor you use. Now in Clipper, it can help you with oozing on non-print moves and the corner quality of your 3D print. That's because as you're transitioning from one movement to the other, you can cause a blob with some sort of dwell while you're not moving to change that direction. And this will compensate for that. Now, as we've talked about before with Clipper, it's just a little bit different to get it set up in this type of firmware. So those are the steps that we're going to walk through today. Now, pretty much all you have to do is know the commands and know what to look for because they do give you a test model to print out that helps you spot the conditions that you're looking for but we'll walk through all of that. So let's go ahead, take a look at the documentation, I'll show you the commands you need to run, and we'll take a look at some prints. And as always, anytime we take a look at a Clipper feature, it's always worthwhile taking a look at the documentation. They do have a lot of helpful hints in here, as well as that test print that you can run to try to tune this in. And that's where most of this instruction is going to be, tuning in the slicer settings to get that print just right, so it gives you some accurate results. But they do have a couple of commands in here, so you can set your velocity limits, as well as examples for a direct drive and a Bowden extruder. But we'll touch more on that in a second. To start, we're just going to go ahead and download their test print, this square tower. You can see it down in here. And then we'll head into the slicer. I am using Crucia Slicer, but there are some specific settings I recommend to be able to tune this in fairly easily. Now they do have some recommendations over on the Clipper reference site, but I'll show you all of those pertaining to this particular slicer. So with our tower here, first thing, set the infill to zero. You don't need it for this test. In print settings, we want to use a coarse layer so that we can see the layer lines. And you want that layer to be 75% of the nozzle diameter you're using. I am using the standard 0.4, so my layer height is going to be a 0.3. You can do as many or as few vertical shells as you'd like. I went with three. Two would probably work just fine as well. And you don't need to be concerned about a lot of tops and bottom layers. I just went with three and three just so I could have a finished model. You can see my model after it prints out. It's pretty rough, but it does the job. Now, I did uncheck extra perimeters if needed. I didn't want the slicer to determine if I needed more because I wanted it to be a thin wall print. I didn't want that to skew any results. Also, I lined up the seam position in the rear. Having the seam to look at does, is kind of helpful when you're doing something like this because you can see how it's changing that seam. We'll look at that here in a little bit. And as far as speed goes, we do need to run at a pretty fast pace to be able to see the advantages of this pressure advance. So I just set all the settings to 100 millimeters a second. Travel, I use a stock 130. That doesn't matter too much. I did slow down the first layer just to make sure that it was going to stick. And one of the important things to do while you're tuning this in is make sure you don't have any automatic acceleration control like these settings right here. By default, I don't use them, but some profiles might. So make sure anything that might be controlling acceleration has been turned off. That will skew your results. And if you have any type of auto speed setting, either turn that off or make sure it's set high enough where we're not gonna impact any of these speeds up here. And in Prusa Slicer, you're going to be concerned with filament settings as well. So we'll head to that tab. And you're concerned mainly with the cooling. You want to make sure you disable auto cooling. Auto cooling, that slows the print speed down based on how long that takes to print that layer. So it gives extra time for the part cooling fan to cool down that filament to give you better print quality. But that's going to skew your results after you've already turned the speed up. This could slow it down. So make sure it's off. I just went with fan always on. In print settings, I went ahead and turned off enable variable layer height feature. You don't need that for this test. Machine limits, I just want to make sure that it's not imposing any limits on my printer. I just set them to ignore. And then as far as extruder goes and retraction, just leave it where you'd usually set it for this printer. This is a Bowden setup. 
I have mine set to a five millimeter length and 60 millimeters of retraction speed. With all those settings complete, you should be able to go ahead and slice and you'll see your print. We have three outer layers. This should be more than enough to show the effects of pressure advance. So we can go ahead and slice that and send it over to the printer. So now that we have our print set up, we can go ahead and copy some of these commands to get ready for our test. So we'll copy this one right here. We're going to set the velocity limits. It does have a setting for square corner velocity. We'll just set that to one and Excel. We'll set it to 500. So over to main sail, we'll just go to the console and we'll punch in what we copied. So those are good. Back to the reference. Again, you have options, examples here for direct drive and Bowden. What this is going to do is start with a setting of zero. So no advance, and then it's going to ramp it up by a certain factor. You're going to have a lot less pressure advance on a direct drive than you would on a Bowden because of how it has to interact with that filament. There's going to be a lot more delay in pulling the filament back when it's trying to adjust in a Bowden system. So this one here for direct drive, it's going to ratchet that up through this print 0 0.005 millimeters. And then in the Bowden, the one that we're going to use, I'll just go ahead and copy it. It's going to start at zero as well, but it's going to ramp it up by 0 0.02. And that's a movement per layer. You'll see that more in the console. So now that we've copied our tuning tower command set, We'll go back to console, paste it in, and we'll run it. So now it is starting the tuning. Now we can just kick off the print, and it will know to go ahead and change that every layer. And then from here, you can just go to your G-code files and start the print job. Now, if you head over to the console, after you start your tuning command and you start your print, you will notice that it starts to increment as it changes layers on the Z-height. But we entered that factor of a 0 0.2, smooth time 0 0.04. You might expect it to climb 0 0.02 each layer, but it doesn't do that. It's actually based on your layer height. So it has some math that it works out, how much it increments it up the print. And then you can measure that print to figure out what your factor should be. Case in point, again, we're running at that 0 0.02. If we do some quick math, we have a 0.3 layer height. So we have our factor, 0.02, times our layer height, 0.3. That gives you the 0.006. That's the increment that it's going to use as it goes through the print. And you can see it right here. It starts at the first layer. It tries to get a level set with this 0056, that's what this one down here is doing. And then it goes to 6, and 12, and 18, and so on. Just keep in mind, as it's changing it, it's not changing it at that 0 0.02 amount. It has some math that it works out to make this happen. And also, because it starts at the very first layer, you can measure the whole print to figure out what your settings should be. And here's our test print. You can see it on the edges where it started out down here, where it didn't have much advance at all, moved all the way up and had way too much. You want the butter zone right in the center. So that's the value we're going to pick. But while we're looking at it, you can see the difference on the seam as well. I think the seam is a pretty good indication of where you need it to be set. This is how I usually set it with RepRap. We're kind of going on the recommendation from the Clipper documentation for this one. But just be aware of that, you can do this. Also, you can use the line method like we do with linear advance if you like to. And if we get it really up close, you can see just where the print starts to smooth out. Now, I don't want my corners too rounded, but I don't want them pinched too much either. So somewhere in here. And since that tuning starts at the very first layer, you can just measure the whole thing. So we'll just take our caliper, Make sure it's zeroed out, of course, and we'll run up to where we think the print starts to smooth out. And just for the sake of the math, I'm going to say mine is pretty good at 25 millimeter. Now, if you have to make a judgment call here, round down if you have to. That's going to be better than having too much. So to figure out what our pressure advance setting should be, 
you want to take your measured height, we had 25 millimeters, times your factor, which we did 0 0.02, and that would be 0 0.5. So that's the value I would enter in my config. So just head over to machine, printer.cfg, and down under the extruder setting, you just enter pressure underscore advance colon and then your value 0 0.5 and that's all there is to it you just hit save and restart and that's pretty much all there is to it it's not really hard to get pressure advance set up you just have to know what commands to enter and what to enter in your config file now it's important to mention that this really doesn't have anything to do with movement it's flow rate it's trying to determine the flow you will need based on the movement that you're making or the part that you're printing. And this is also going to be different for a lot of different filaments. You might have to tune each one in. But I found one setting for most PLAs will get the job done. So let's take a look at the print before pressure advance and after pressure advance. Here's that same part with our slicer settings that we did for the test. Remember, we were at 100 millimeters a second for a lot of the different values. This is with no pressure advance on. If we take a tight look at one of the corners, you can see just how rounded it is without pressure advance on. And this is going to improve your print quality overall, again, depending on what part you're printing, because it's able to control the flow rate much better. And then we'll take a look with our pressure advanced setting of 0.5. You can see that corner is quite a bit smoother. We'll do a side-by-side -side comparison. This one might need to be dialed up just a bit, but it has made some improvements. Let's see if I can get you a good side-by-side -side shot. To see it just a little bit more drastically, I think the seam tells a lot. That's why I like to line it up in the rear. This is without pressure advance. This is with. You can see how much more consistent that is on the corners as well from above. This is with, this is without. You can see just how much more this one is pulled out because it's not adjusting the flow rate as it's going from X to Y or vice versa. And again, there's the same corner without, with. So effectively, this will help our print quality. So there we go, pressure advance in Clipper firmware. And I see this as one of those features that's a really quick win. It's not really hard to get set up. You just have to know what commands to enter, and it helps to know what those commands actually do. Then you can do a quick test print and decide for yourself how much pressure advance you might need on your 3D printer. Remember, direct drive is going to be a lot less than a Bowden setup. And there's a handful of things you can do to reduce that amount if you think you need to. But most of the time in Clipper, it's pretty tolerant of most 3D printer setups. So hopefully you found this helpful. That is it for today, and I'll see you really soon on the next one.